everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be talking about the Succession finale. Uh, it's finally here after four seasons. Uh, this show finally comes to a close. Uh, so there will be spoilers, so spoilers ahead if you haven't watched the finale. Uh, make sure to go check it out. Come back. This is a super long finale. It was about an hour and a half. Um, and uh, But I will say it just flows very very nicely into it um this isn't going to be really a review of the episode or the series because i think at this point we know that the the series is just quality it's very well done very well planned i think everyone behind the camera and uh, you know behind the story uh had a really fun plan going into all this and they they succeeded in creating just a moment in television uh that it's going to be remembered for a long long time and a series that will probably i will probably have to revisit in the future because i think now that we know how everything ends it's going to be fun uh to kind of go back and take a look at some of the hints and and, and figure out like you know how we got here um so like i mentioned there will be spoilers uh let's go over some of the events so up and up until this uh episode we had been going back and forth Right. Uh, it was really Kendall in, in Rome uh, trying to stop the acquisition uh, of Waystar by Gojo uh, and with with Shiv was helping Gojo out uh, working with Madsen. Now, things obviously are always in flux, especially in something like this. And at the end of the last episode, you know, we had the funeral and everyone was really like their emotions were very raw, especially Roman uh, as he went out into the crowd and, you know, got himself like injured uh so that's kind of where we kick off this episode we have kendall who had been primed to be at least he thinks of himself as the successor uh the only one that makes a choice because uh and according to him he's really built for this like this is his purpose uh and then we have shiv on the other side working with mattson trying to make a deal um and we we know that unfortunately that doesn't work out but at the beginning of the episode, they're both trying to like whip up some votes for the from the board to either stop or let the sale go through, uh, and they need Roman, right? And that's kind of what kicks off the first part of it. Uh, they need Roman's vote to make sure that they can sway things on their side. Uh, and he's over in the Caribbean. They go to Barbados where his mom is having some kind of event. Um, I, I love that their mom is always very hands-off when it comes to the business. Uh, but she still also has her own little machinations and it's this little weird like non like it's it's something that's very innocuous but it still just kind of shows you how she also sees her children as uh as a means to an end which which was kind of a theme for the whole season uh and or for the whole series really so uh so first we have shiv going to visit them and then she sees roman they talk a little bit about what happened, uh, the injury and all that. Uh, and then we have, you know, Kendall finds out that he's there. So they, he also flies out there. And that's where we have our first confrontation. Because at this point, Siobhan and Kendall are still on opposite sides trying to either make the sale go through or, or not. Uh, and they really go all at it with, with Roman kind of caught in the middle of this. And at this point, he's already hands off. Uh, he's he's kind of done with all this. He doesn't care about all like. He, he thought it should be him, uh, but I think that's only because of his own hubris. I don't think he ever really wanted uh, to be the successor to, to run the company. Um, but then while all this is happening, we go back to New York and we see Mattson talking to Tom. And he's it's a really, really uh, awkward and like tense and just kind of fucked up scene overall, like Matson is is just over the last few episodes I think we've learned that he's just a terrible terrible person uh and he he makes Tom pretty much like beg for his job and and, and you know and not in so many words but that's kind of what ends up happening uh but we discover that the reason this is meeting is happening is because Matson doesn't want Shiv as the CEO uh he wants a puppet and who is a better executive puppet than Tom? Because all Tom wants is the power, the position, the prestige, uh, even if it means having to bow down to the next person, right? And he's okay with that. I think he's been that way his whole career with all that, like even with Logan. 
Uh, and now he's just kind of going after the biggest fish, and that's Madsen at this moment. Uh, so Greg finds out from, from them talking that they want to replace Shiv, that it's not going to be her. Uh, he doesn't know that it's going to be Tom. He just thinks it's going to be another person. He relays that to his cousins. He talks to Kendall. And then they all kind of, I mean, at this point, when he tells Siobhan, like, she feels betrayed and played like a like a fool. Uh, so there's a really great reconciliation, at least temporarily, uh, for them. And there's just some really beautiful scenes of like siblings just kind of being there for each other. And and they talk about it. They they decide that Ken should be the right person because they have to present a united front with the board. Uh, and yeah, all that stuff, watching the, the after credits stuff or the, the behind the, the episode stuff with the creators, like, they talked about how that was just such like everything that happened in Barbados was just so much fun to shoot because it's really these characters at their core. Like they are still family. They do care for each other. I think they do care for each other, but um, there's so many things that are, are just interfering in, in the way they, they can interact. Uh, but it's a really nice sequence. There's a really cool sequence in the kitchen where, you know, once like it feels like they are just being kids and being siblings together which is really nice. So they they go back, they're ready. It's the final showdown, really. Um, we have, uh, be, before they go to the board meeting, they do stop at Connor's house, or I guess Logan's house, who is now being bought out by Connor. Uh, and as they're kind of going through all the stuff, like, you know, what things they want to keep or whatever, they watch this old dinner tape uh, of Logan and, and some of the board and Connor's there. It's some kind of virtual dinner, so that's why it's being recorded. Uh, obviously, the kids weren't there because, you know, at this point, his his dad was not really on good terms with them. Uh, but they all kind of just sit there and watch, and and it's a very emotional scene because even though these are like some of the worst rich people in the world, they did just lose their dad, and you can tell that they do care, and and the emotions come out, and they see him just being a normal person, right? They see him outside of the outside of his corporate persona uh, and they see a little bit of humanity, somebody that could actually enjoy life every once in a while, like even if it's for just for a few minutes. Um, it's a really cool scene. It's really great to see Brian Cox again for one last time. Uh, he was uh, the engine that really brought the show all the way here, in my opinion. Uh, so it's really fun to see that. Uh, and then we finally go on to the board meeting and we think there's a united front we, we, we think that the Roy's have all the votes that they need to move ahead with their plan. They talk to Stewie. They talk to, you know, I think the character of Stewie, uh, uh, Aaron Moyed, as he was always really interesting throughout the series because he's really just looking out for himself. He'll go to the best deal. There's no allegiances. There's no loyalty there. And that's a lot of what this show really talked about. Uh, all this stuff, all these facades are fake. You're there until it's not convenient for you to be there anymore until it's not worth it for you to be there anymore. Uh, so it was really, really fun. Uh, before we move on, uh, let's finish off Connor and Willa's story. Uh, so Connor, uh, he's actually just waiting for the election results, right? And his story ends up kind of like very ambiguous. Like, we don't really know. We don't know the results of the election. We don't know if he's going to become, you know, is he's going to get his ambassadorship from Mencken, who, who he had a deal with. Uh, and then him and Will are just kind of left in limbo because, Depending on what happens, it's what the relationship is going to go. Uh, I think Will is one of the characters that ended up in the better position from when we started in the show. And I think Connor, by removing himself from everything, uh, or, you know, either whether he did it himself or, or it was just that's kind of how things played out, that he was removed from everything. Um, he was probably one of the quote unquote happier endings that we got in this series because I don't think there is no happy endings here like the director and the, the the writer the creator of the show they talked about how this show was always a tragedy and that's why we get the end that we get so uh, let's get into it we we're at the board meeting we got the votes uh, it all comes down to Siobhan's vote and she steps out of the room uh, of course her brothers go after her to see what the hell is going on and we have the final confrontation where and I'm still trying to piece all this stuff together because I don't know. Did Siobhan always mean to, she, she's she's going to vote uh, to go ahead with the sale and 
pretty much go back on everything they just talked about in the same episode. Uh, but I don't know if she's doing it as a play. She's doing it to like screw over her brother because overall everyone really like she's just picking the the devil she knows, I guess. Uh, or if she's trying to protect Kendall because we know we've seen that this position, this role will end eventually consume your life and eventually kill you. Like that's what happened to Logan. Right. Uh, and maybe she's trying to protect her brother from that. I don't know. There's, there's so many ways we can take a look at this or it could be all of them. Like it really could be all of them. Um, Sarah Snook has played this character amazingly throughout the whole show. And yeah, she just shows so much emotion. It's, it's really, really good. Uh, and, and we finally get a big blowout. It even gets physical. Uh, you know, the, questioning of of uh, Kendall's kids lineage comes into play like which was not even a thing that I even ever thought about it is wild it is incredible uh just an incredible scene uh and you know <clears throat> uh Shiv goes and votes and we get one of the best moments that even the creators kind of talked about like uh Roman reminds Kendall that they're nothing like this is all bullshit it's all a facade like if it's not them somebody else would be doing this like just they're just kind of placeholders for the next thing and and everything that they do everything that they're that's happening it really means nothing in the larger scheme of anything uh which is a really like even though these are the because it makes sense on multiple levels right these people are super rich they are doing this because that's what they think they have to do to control their power like they really are just doing all this because of their own personal interests uh, but not because they'll stop being wealthy if if they're not in control, but just because they want to be in control. Like these people are all going to be wealthy probably forever. Uh, so that doesn't affect them. Like he doesn't need to work. They don't need to have a job, right? The deal is going to pay them out uh, and they can go on and do something else. Uh, but that's not it. It's not about that. It's about the control. Um, so yeah, that was really poignant scene. Uh, I think, uh, Karen Culkin's probably one of the MVPs of this episode. I, I don't know. They're all really good. Uh, we'll see. It's going to be difficult come Emmy season to figure out who's going to get what. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the sale goes through. Gojo buys out. And Matson, you know, pretty much is in control now. He, he, he won, but that's not really what this is about. This is now about that he has put Tom in charge. And and Tom knows that Greg betrayed him. And and Greg, Greg has been kind of the character that we've been following for all these years. He's kind of like the the most the closest to normal, I would even say. Like, because even though he came from a rich family, like he started out kind of pretty much from the bottom and just tried to very much like Tom trying to go up against like I mean, you know, trying to group up with whoever would help him go upward. Um, and it was always about dealing. And I think he got a little bit more shrewd as he came by. He just kind of picked the wrong horse here uh, because I think overall he still cared about family. I think he was one of the only characters that eventually still like overall a little bit still cared about family. Right. Uh, and he would rather be on his cousin's side, I think, uh, even if they don't care for him that way. Like it's it's really messed up and really like but but Tom knows that he would rather have Greg. Uh, and they have a really messed up scene. Like these are interesting scenes, but they're also pretty messed up because earlier on when they were, when everybody was at Logan's house, uh, you know, claiming stuff, like as far as things to take or to keep, uh, they were putting stickers on them. And then Tom, uh, later on in this scene, he puts a sticker on Greg and he's like, I'm going to keep you, Greg. You're going to stay here. Even though you betrayed us, like Matson calls it out too, during their little press conference that he knows that Greg betrayed him. Uh, but they're going to keep him. So I don't know. Is this a good, I don't know if this, this is not a happy ending for Greg, but it's also kind of where Greg wants to be. Um, so I don't know. Nicholas Braun was probably just my favorite character overall throughout the series because of the kind of nonsense that he went through. But, uh, but yeah, really great performance. Uh, and, and that's it. Like we were at the end. The last scene is of Kendall walking in the park followed by the, his dad's bodyguard, who's now his bodyguard. And uh, he he's lost everything, but not really, because he still 
just like one of the richest persons in the world. Uh, so like he just lost what he thought he wanted or what he wanted really. I don't know if he was sincere about wanting the, to be the CEO, uh, but he lost it and he lost his siblings too, right? Roman's going back to being whoever he was at the beginning of the show, like just this person. It almost feels like this was a detour in his life where he's like, yeah, whatever, I'll I'll do the corporate thing for a little while. You know, my dad, that's what my dad wants. I want to be close to my dad. Uh, and now without him here, like he doesn't really care. Uh, Shiv is back with Tom. They're going to have a kid. Uh, and she still ends up being kind of at the top, just not in control. Uh, and I guess now that's something that she's she's made her bed and she's going to have to deal with it. But I think she's willing to put up with it. Uh, and then, yeah, Kendall's by himself. He's lost his dad. He's lost his business. He's lost his family. Uh, and he's lost his own, like, his own kids and wife are off away. Like, yeah, even his assistant, uh, there's this moment where uh, he calls out to this person. is like, where's new Jess? Because we know that Jess left last episode, which uh, I don't know. I don't know if he fired her after the conversation they had or if she just kind of chose to leave. Either way. Um, it is just, it reminds you that these are not good people. None of these people are good people. Uh, so you shouldn't be rooting for them anyways. It's good that they all kind of got fucked in the end. Um, uh, so I don't know. This has been one of the greatest shows I've seen in a long time. I, I started this show late. Uh, I jumped on when season three came out and everybody was kind of raving about it. Uh, I caught up, I binged two seasons very quickly, and then I started watching weekly. Uh, and it's been such a fun ride ever since. So uh, now that we're here, let me know what some of your favorite moments of Succession are. What did you think of the finale? Uh, anything that I might have missed or anything that you want to talk about? We may do some more videos about Succession. I don't know if, if I have something to talk about. Um, I had originally shot this video the night of, but then we had problems with the audio. So there was no audio. So there's just like 17 minutes of me ranting at the camera without any audio. Uh, I might put that up just because it's funny. Uh, but yeah, let me know what else, uh, what else, what are you going to watch next on max or what, where are you going to watch your next show? Let me know what else we should cover. We're talking about a few things ongoing, uh, class of all nine and FX is pretty good, but that's just a mini series. Uh, Clay and I just did a love and death, um, retrospective with the, for the whole season that's on the channel. Check it out. Uh, I'll definitely be talking about justified as it comes back, uh, later this month. So yeah, let us know if there's any shows you want us to talk about or cover, uh, leave it in the comments. So as always, thank you for watching everyone. Remember to share, like subscribe, hit the bell. So you know, when we go live, that is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye-bye.